Welcome to another episode of Sense and Rant. I am Mutsumario Adeola, your host, your guide, your favorite podcast girl, whatever you want to call me. On today's episode, we're talking about earning a living versus following your passion. So today I'm joined by Andy, Sebastian, and Ify. Uh, let's read their bios before we meet them. Andy began his storytelling career following Robert Redford around rivers of Montana, co-producing, co-directing, shadow casting, the making of a river runs through it. The documentary garnered a regional Emmy nomination and won a gold Hugo at the Chicago Film Festival. After moving to Minnesota, he turned to screenwriting. In 2016, he won the IFP North Knight Foundation Screenwriting Residency with his historical biopic, The Lowry Gang. His most recent screenplay, Still Away, is currently in development at Amazon Studios with Academy Award winner Charles Bonnet attached as director. In 2019, he got behind the camera writing and directing Song Without Words, an award-winning short at the LA Short International Film Festival. In 2020, a film he wrote for Rickshaw Films, Nighthawks, was an audience choice winner at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Film Festival, 39 Redefined Virtual. Andy, ladies and gentlemen, Akiemi Sebastian Akiropo is an award-winning Nigerian-American screenwriter and director for the Movement Pro Pictures, a media and film production company with operations in Lagos, Nigeria, and the United States of America. Akiemi, or Sebastian, has worked on numerous projects, including documentaries for the BBC, TV commercials for Guinness, and other comparable brands, and several other outlets. His last offering is a resounding debut feature, in Coming from Insanity, which he wrote, directed, and edited. Sebastian also co-directed the Boko Haram-inspired film, Guaza, which is currently in post-production and expected to be out in 2021. If his day job is a leadership rotation program juggling two functions, e-commerce and business development. A strategic thinker at heart, he loves to play chess and has a knack for problem solving. He's passionate about fashion, and sports. Growing up in a Nigerian household, you had the option of becoming either of these three things, a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Some of us took a different route. I chose to become a lawyer because of the injustice I saw against women and children. I did two years of law school, but I quickly realized it wasn't for me. I went back to my passion, which is making film. But even with that, I had to stop at some point to earn a living. I'm at this point in my life where I need to decide if I want to follow my passion or keep earning a living. Our first question today is what did you want to be when you were a child? Andy? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, I had a very untraditional thing. My dad was a, a veteran of World War II and uh, I was just fascinated with the war. I think partly because he he would never speak about it. And uh, so I was fascinated with becoming a World War II fighter pilot. I just, you know, and the, and the problem with that, of course, is that, A, there were like no World War II planes around anymore by this point. And two, I was like terrified of heights. So I, I saw like, this is not going to be, you know, my future. I was also really a big, you know, um, I was into football, but I was built like a, like a matchstick. So I'm like, I'm not going to survive this. So, but that, that was kind of the... That's where I was headed. But I, but even at a young age, I think I was always interested in story. I was I was an avid reader, loved history, um, and so I think that sort of shaped me. But uh, yeah, I didn't really have like a anything set in stone that I was. This is what I want to be. It was it was kind of like uh, I was all over the place. I didn't have any expectations put on me. Thankfully, by my parents, like you know, you're going to be this or you're going to be that. So I kind of had an open open door there, you know, for me to just follow you know, whatever my passion was. It's a good thing you're not Nigerian then, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I was going to say I'll jump in now. Um, yeah, because the thing, there's another option, um, Motori, it's the fourth <laughs> option is to yeah. be a, the black sheep of the family, baby. Oh, yeah, that, that is... <laughs> so, uh, that's that's that always available to you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's actually the route that I went. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> my, uh, my dad was an engineer, retired now. My brothers are engineers. And naturally, I was supposed to go right into that. Um, you know, after a couple of years in college, the epiphany just came and I knew 
for a fact that I was never going to work one single day as an engineer. And um, I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker, um, thanks to Tarantino, right? I've always known that I was fascinated by, you know, by the art world and creativity and stuff like that. And um, I did a lot of writing initially, but I wasn't sure um, what form that I actually loved the best and wanted to, you know, go into. And then obviously um, I discovered film and, you know, Tarantino and, you know, the inspiration there. So, you know, so I went the whole black sheep run away from home because I, you know, I, I sat them down, like really my second year in college, I sat my parents down and I told them how, you know, I have this dream. I don't want to be an engineer. I feel like, you know, I should really just move over to film school right now. And as you guys know, you know, talking to an African parent about stuff like that. I mean, they looked <laughs> oh, yeah. at me and they thought I lost my mind, like, clearly. So, yeah, um, yeah. so there was no way that that was going to happen as long as I was under their roof. So, um, so I basically took off with my cousin. We ran off to California. And, um, you know, so I basically had to, like, earn the stripes and, you know, but it, it mm. comes full circle. Everybody's, you know, on board and supportive now. So I think they just, you know, crossing the path, they wanted to know that you were serious and that you were gonna, you know, you weren't going that route because you wanted to be lazy or, you know, or what. Well, so. I commend your effort for actually stand. <laughs> I could. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, I, I literally am still struggling sure? with it now. I don't know. I just feel like I'm still struggling because even right now, the idea of not having a corporate job and leaving that for this, what I know that is family and gives me money. Um, I don't know. I struggle with it, but man, kudos to you. Ify. <laughs> so <laughs> on my end, <laughs> I was more in the traditional path. So I always wanted to be a doctor. Like, and it wasn't because of, it might, maybe it was the Nigerian parent influence, but I think I had a knack for the sciences right from when I was a kid, right? Um, so I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, I, I was a science student uh, in well, elementary school, high school, what we call secondary school back home. I did sciences uh, for college. I did a biochem undergrad. I was pre-med. It was, all, it, was all, it was all well and good. I always wanted to be a doctor, but, and it was not really about the money for me. It was more about the. Um, it was more. It was more passion, not not money, right? I wanted. I always wanted to help, and I thought healthcare was my was my way to do that. Um, so, it, you know, I I, I I considered like even maybe being a phys- physician assistant or or a nurse or something, but I, I wanted to be a doctor always. But um, I think where it took a turn for me was after undergrad in the, in the U.S. You had to do a bunch of stuff, but one of them was taking an MCAT to get into med school, and that was yeah. just that was the bane of my that was the bane of my existence. So uh, <laughs> never 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 put a test in my whole life, but couldn't get past the MCAT, and just that's just me being real. It is what it is, and mm-hmm. um, I think a year or two after I finished college, I thought about it, but it got to the point where it was like the passion was starting to go away, so. Mm-hmm. And I was not going to do a career that I was not passionate about. So uh, things took a different turn. I'm now on the business side of things, but mm-hmm. still in health, still in healthcare. So my yeah. whole my whole journey to help, my whole I feel like my life's mission and purpose is still going to be achieved, but not on the front line. In a line, different more, way, right? More more on the mm-hmm. business side of things. So okay. still still on track. <laughs> still on track. Exactly. Still on track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I think for me. I wanted to become a lawyer just because, you know, I grew up in Nigeria. I grew up in Lagos where women rights and the rights of children was just, it's zero, like literally nothing. Um, but the, the dream that I told myself I had is not what I really wanted to do. What I really wanted to do was make films and tell stories. Um, I, but I was 20, 21, I think, when this dream changed. When did you know, like, was there, is there a film you saw? Did you talk to somebody that let you know that, you know, this part that I chose now is the part for me? Um, I, I, I think it was, for me, it was, I was in high school um, and I was on my school paper. I was sort of on track to be being a journalist. I loved writing. I loved research. I loved, you know, kind of digging up stories. 
Um, and then it was, I, I think I was in, uh, there are two things kind of happened. One, uh, my newspaper, they put me on the entertainment beat. And so I started reviewing movies and mm -hmm. fell in love with film. And, uh, and then the second thing, I got this assignment in an English class. It was uh, kind of a multimedia presentation. And so I created this slideshow to music. And I think the, it was about kind of like the injustices in the world or something. And as I'm showing it to this class, you know, we're in the dark or whatever, I look over at this girl next to me and she's crying. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, like I've, you know, I've created this emotion in her just from putting these images together with this music. And that I was just so hooked after that. I was like, I'm changing from journalism to filmmaking, <laughs> I, you know, which eventually led to screenwriting. I'm like, I just want to tell stories that make people feel something, you know. To, that make people cry, Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like to make people cry. So. <laughs> okay, well, you're a brilliant story, yeah, storyteller, by the way, just so you know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, um, growing up in, in Nigeria, you're exposed to, you know, a whole lots of uh, genre of films from different industries. Um, on TV, I think um, some nights they had Indian movie nights and they had Chinese movie nights and, you know, Hollywood films. So we watched yeah. everything, you know, if you grew up in Nigeria. Um, so for me, that's always been you know, always been there, been exposed to different, you know, cultures, traveled quite a bit growing up and stuff like that. Um, I think for me, I, I got into writing. It, it was just so funny how it happened. I was driving, so probably 98, 97, 98 or so. Um, I was about 16, 15, 16 at the time. And I was listening to a LL Cool J song and you know, and he, he said something, he said a line and I just thought ah, like, you know, if I were a rapper and I were making all this money, I don't think I would have used that line. Like I've heard it so many times before, like I would, you know, try to put a spin on it, make it different, mm -hmm. make it my own. And that started, um, you know, my journey of writing, you know, short stories and prose and, you know, even some rap. Like I have an album with like, you know. Rap. Oh my God, I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> like not released or anything like that. But I just wrote every single thing that I could. And then eventually um, I watched Pulp Fiction. I never mm. saw it initially when it came out or anything like that. And I watched it and I was just completely blown away by the creativity, by the craft, the authenticity. Like you never saw anything like that. You knew that this guy is different and is giving you like, it, it, I don't know, it was just sort of like a, a glimpse into another human being's soul, right? Mm. So I just felt, man, I love this. This is what I wanted to do. And then I started, you know, reading all sorts of scripts from all sorts of films. And, you know, then I eventually, you know, got into writing my own and, you know, applying for different competitions and stuff like that. So I think that was the birth, you know, for me. So Thanks to Pop Fiction, then you have and, your... And LL. Yeah, <laughs> okay, LL well. make sure we, we <laughs> okay, well. yeah. Make sure when you grow up there, make sure you to thank them yeah. and mention <laughs> that to them, okay? Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not the LL story so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beginning. You have to go from the very beginning, right. okay? Yeah, yeah. Ify? So, mine is a little <laughs> less refined, right? Just because... <laughs> I'm still figuring out exactly what I want to do. So mm -hmm. um, I, I saw, I've transitioned definitely from being like more technical, like, you know, specific focus to being on the business side of things. But exactly what I want to do on that side, I don't know. I'm thinking general management right now. So I'm in a, I'm in a leadership, a leadership position program, a general management program for the next two years of my company where I get to go through different functions and basically figure out uh, what I enjoy doing and see if it ultimately leads to that GM path. So right now I'm doing e-commerce uh, marketing, which I'm liking. I'm also doing business development. So I'm still building to exactly what I want to do. So I don't have that specific, like refined, oh, I'm a screenwriter or I'm a marketer. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. I don't have that down path yet, but I know what the mission is. I know what the purpose is, right? So generally I want to lead people. I want to lead teams. I want to help, you know, grow a business, but more in the in that healthcare you know life sciences area where i feel like the work i'm doing has an impact on the lives of people so i know i know where i want to go but i don't have 
exactly what it is yet. So in terms of when I, I had that transition, I think it was at my, at my last job, right? After I started after undergrad and it's like, okay, I'm going through the motions. I'm doing well at work, but it's like, how do I get to that next step? How do I get into management? So talking to a few of my mentors and it's like, you know, get, get an MBA, you know, that would give you that push to go into management. You take, you know, business classes and you understand how, you know, how business works. Cause pre previously it was just all technical. I had zero, <laughs> zero business knowledge, zero business background. So just talking to a few mentors, a few managers, uh, help me make that transition. But in terms of specifically what I want to do, that that has not been answered yet. <laughs> we're, still, we're, still, we're, still, we're still building on that. So <laughs> man, if, if it makes you feel any better, like yeah, I'm still figuring it out too. I did corporate America. Yeah. I, I'm doing military. I'm doing screenwriting. I feel like I'm doing bits, you know, here and there just trying to find do not laugh at hear me. Just trying to find <laughs> myself until I can say, you know, this is me. So that limbo that you're in right now, I mean, everything you're learning will bring you to that point where you're whole and just, you are your own person, you know, where you can own your own craft. So, you know, let's keep building. Let's keep finding together. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I so I, feel like, I mean, sorry to cut you, but I feel like I was yeah. in the, you know, in the same boat as well. When I knew I wanted to write, you know, there's a whole lot of things that, you know, right. that you can write about and that, you know, you can do in that, you know, in that lane or have a, you know, there's a whole bunch of options in terms of having a career in that. But I mean, when, when it comes, I feel like you will know, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's also a good place that you're in right now, you know, just test the different waters and I feel like it'll come for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's the hope. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so I think my next question is good. Well, it's not, I think I know that my next question is going to be for Andy and um, Sebastian. What did you guys give up to follow your passion? You know, I, we know for sure if he had to, you know, redirect his dreams and channel it into something else. What did you guys give up to follow your passion? <laughs> uh, that's an easy. I, uh, I think I gave up getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> For quite a while, because uh, because nobody was, uh, you know, nobody was buying what I was writing. I, f I feel like I, I kind of gave up a certain sense of security because, you know, chasing being a filmmaker or a screenwriter doesn't have like a clear roadmap. I mean, it's not like you get a degree, you know, you put it on, you know, that degree on your resume, you, you hand your resume to a film studio and you get a job. I mean, it just doesn't work that way in, in the industry. And I mean, it's crazy. It's unpredictable. And the industry is really kind of built on relationships and and other things that aren't always that obvious, you know. Especially if you're somebody who grew up in Florida, like a million miles away from the from the industry. So, um, you know, for me, I think you know it, it was that sense of security. I, I've done an enormous number of odd jobs to just kind of support myself, you know, so that I could keep writing, keep chasing the dream, you know, until I've sort of arrived at the place where I'm at now, where you know, member of the Writers Guild. You know, I've got a screenplay, you know, uh, option at Amazon. So, there, but it's, it's, it's kind of like a constant hustle too. Like there isn't like you reach this point and you're there. Like, you know, in a lot of occupations, once you're there, it's really hard to kind of get ousted out of that. But with, with filmmaking and screenwriting, it's like, it's a constant hustle. You're constantly, you know, trying to reinvent yourself and, you know, it's kind of, what was the last thing you did, you know, and was that successful or not successful? So, um, I guess, you know, I gave up feeling that sense of security, being more comfortable with change and taking, you know, each day at a time, you know, one day at a time. Um, yeah, just to piggyback on what Andy said, it's definitely you're giving up, you know, getting paid. Um, <laughs> fortunately for someone like me, um, I never, I never really worried about money uh, growing up. Uh, not that, you know, maybe my parents were millionaires or anything like that, but it was just not the, it was not the focal point of, you know, of life in general, even when they say, you know, you have to be an engineer or a doctor or whatever, wasn't, you know, so that you could make money it was more so that, you know, it was a, a, you know, you were doing something that had some prestige and it, you can impact your, you know, environment and stuff like that. Um, so for me, the money, 
it, it wasn't such a big deal because there were other other things. I had a job, fortunately for me. Um, I think the way mine worked, I moved to LA. I ran off to LA. Um, I went to film school. I didn't finish there because it was too expensive. And I just thought, I listened to um, uh, Rodriguez as well. Um, and it was basically, they're not going to teach you anything except just get you to mediocrity, right? Like you have to find your own voice and, you know, and basically tell your own stories and do it your way. So um, I didn't have the support of my parents. So I couldn't afford the film school. They were never going to pay for that. Um, so uh, I left there and then I moved to Nigeria because we had, you know, a huge film industry um, in terms of, you know, quantity and stuff like that um you know so for me i i i guess i um i wasn't making money um i moved to nigeria away from my family because most of my family um are in america um so i moved to nigeria but then you're hustling and working so much like you have to work three times as hard you know just try trying to um just sort of uh, make a name for yourself and you know get to the point where people start to pay you for your services. Um, so for me, that took everything that I had. I didn't have a lot of friends because there was not, you know, enough time to hang out and do all the things that, you know, grow bonds, right? Um, relationships. I mean, I, the normal age or typical age where you would get married, I, I couldn't do that because I just, I really didn't have my stuff together basically. So um, yeah, so that's basically what it is. You miss out on friends, on family, on special, you know, family moments that were happening over here. I couldn't be, you know, I couldn't be or attend a lot of those. Um, yeah, so basically it's, uh, it's, it's quite a bit. It, it's, it's quite a bit. But I think for me, though, the dream was so big that every single time it felt like what I was doing was worth it and that it was going to pay off. So that just kept me going really okay um so and now kind of short of words here because you both have like very different background from me i grew up poor like i I grew up not having and when the time came for me to choose i think subconsciously i chose to earn a living um i chose to work in factories i chose to learn business it just so i could get into a corporate america setting just so I can have what it is I didn't have growing up. And also have families, <clears throat> I also have families, you know, relying on me. And it's just like, I, my dream is valid, but also I have to provide. So I'm still in that, I'm still, I'm still at a, a point where I'm still struggling to let my dreams um, come first, but I guess I'm trying and I'm learning, but yeah. Yeah. That's, well, I, I- that's, well, I'll say I'm still struggling too. You know, I mean, it's like again, it's like uh, you know, you constantly cobbling together, you know, a, a gig here, a gig there, you know, something just to kind of get by. And uh, and it is, and you know, it is hard. I have a family, and so you know, I would like to devote all of my time to writing, but it's like you have you have to pay some bills, and so you have to do whatever you have to do to cobble together. And the thing is, like you know, if you're really passionate about that you have to do it regardless. And mm-hmm. so you find time, you know, to pursue that, you know, and, you know, you, you find a way to pay the bills. So it's, yeah, it's a guess. difficult balance. It is, it is a difficult balance. It, it really is. And, and I think for me, um, I have a lot of uh, older siblings. I'm six, um, I'm number six of seven. Um, you know, so I, I've seen a lot of the whole family structure and what it actually takes to, you know, to hold a family together. And I knew I was nowhere close to being able to do that, not financially, not, you know, not in terms of my time or anything like that. So I moved as lightly as I could. Right. I tried not to get in any relationship that's going to hold me down. I was conscious <laughs> of stuff like that. Right. So, um, yeah, because I feel like if it's just me, I can get by. Right. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, that's a little different for you, Motorai, if you, you know, have to be responsible for, you know, for other people. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll figure it out as we go. But <laughs> would you would you say the sacrifice, whatever it is that you did, is it worth it for now? Right now, is it worth it to you? For me? Mm-hmm. A, a million percent. And there's only one reason why. And I got to the point where whatever happens I will never have regrets because mm. it, it was 
honestly, the drive, the dream, it was so big and so strong that I just, it couldn't be turned off. Right. I, I just couldn't turn it off. Whatever, whenever the pressure got, you know, so much, my parents and family, you know, they call me all the time, like, what the hell are you doing in Nigeria? Everyone's trying to come over here. You're, you're going over. I mean, it just fits that narrative. Like, Maybe something is a little off in this guy's head. So, um, you know, so a, a whole lot of that. But, you know, I was I was dedicated to it because it was mm-hmm. it, it was real. And I knew that, you know, if I could put in the time and do the work, like I said, I feel like it will turn around and they will see that, OK, you know, this guy actually you know, he is serious about this and maybe there's something there. Right. You know, so for me, I feel like it's definitely worth it. It's, but it's a conversation you got to have with yourself. Right. And, and I always say, if, if the dream is strong enough, you're going to go like, you're going to do things beyond what you ever thought you're capable of. Right. It's, it's, it's that strong of a drive when it's in you and when you figured out what it is that you really, really want to do. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Because, like, you know, uh, you know, the question was it was it worth it? You know, is it worth it? That sort of implies, you know, would you rather have taken another road? And and for me, and I think kind of like Sebastian, like there wasn't another road. You know, you have to do this. You know, and I was gonna get, I was gonna do it whether I got paid or not. Um, you know, if I was a success or not. You know, because that is what is inside me. It's how I express myself in the world. And you know. I guess if you're asking me, if, is it worth it to follow your passion? I would just say that anytime you're following your heart, you're going in the right direction. You know, that, that's a good indicator of where you need to go, in, you know, in the world. Right. And so you might, all in your heart. I love it. In my sense, it wasn't really much of a, it wasn't really a sacrifice, right? It was a pivot. So hmm. um, I, w- I wouldn't say that it's not worth it. I think it's worth it. I think I'm still in the right direction. Uh, but every, every now and then I find myself on, um, Instagram pages and a couple, a lot of doctors and just looking at their feet and just seeing what they're doing. <laughs> and I literally every now and then, but it's like, and then I, you know, but I do realize that the, the passion to go on that journey, right? Cause I, I wanted to be like, a, I wanted to be a surgeon. So like just thinking of that, like 11, 13 year journey, just to become a professional. I was just like, I, there has to be a drive that propels you to spend that amount of time learning that crap. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think um, it's it's not burning in, in that in that sense, but in the business side, and turning around the business and still getting to that same goal, I think that passion is there. But I guess a question for you guys who are who are most settled in what you're doing is like, is there a difference between like what your career is and what your dream is? Because things like talking about sports mm-hmm. and fashion come very very easily and naturally to me, right? But I feel like those are things I can do alongside pursuing a career. So that's where I think I have a different distinction in my head. But I, yeah, I don't know if there are any thoughts on that. Um, yeah, I think uh, your field is probably a bit more dynamic in terms of um, you know technology coming in and sports science and all these other things. Like I feel like it's just so much going on. I mean, same thing with um, probably Andy and what we do. But I think ours is just a bit more defined or you know at least um it's easier i I feel to identify and say okay i want to be a screenwriter and you know okay you write a hundred and some pages and that's you know and then you try to get people to you know to pay for it or whatever and or if you want to be a film director it's you know it's you you can go there it's it's easy so i feel like you probably still just need to narrow it down to exactly what it is i yep. mean you know i think for us it's like yeah it's 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 hard it's a hustle to try to get paid for it but at least it's it's defined right and, yeah. I, I think you're i think that distinction is, is very interesting because i think you can have a career and follow your passion like that maybe it's different from your career um you know again because you know there's um a lot of people that uh you know love basketball where they're never going to play in the nba they might dream about doing that they're never going to do that but they can play in the league they can do you know whatever and they can still have that experience still follow you know that passion that they have for that and and fulfill themselves in that way um and still do something else i mean because it's just 
in our society, it's necessary to generate an income, you know, and yeah. so that's always going to be there. Um, and so sometimes I think people can do that like on the side, you know, as, as a, a complimentary thing. Um, and there are other people too, like, it's just like, I'm all in on one thing and that, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. So I think your career can be your passion. I don't think it always has to be. Does that make sense, Ify? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm, okay. Sorry, I'm taking the, the mud yeah, yeah, no, 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 I think mean, mean, if, he, if he's got it going on, I mean, he, he under, I mean, he's so put together compared to where I was at that age. I mean, <laughs> right. I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. thinking. You know, yeah. I agree with you. I'm telling you, like when I see him, sometimes I'm just like, oh, how is he so young and doing so much? And I was like that age. I literally didn't even know what. Yeah, I couldn't figure anything out. But I'm so proud of you. Um, but I guess I'll tell you that in person. <laughs> um so gentlemen would you change anything like your story the the journey that brought you here the broken road that has led you here would you change anything i would uh, i think personally for me um i wouldn't have gone to law school i would have started earlier um maybe leaving nigeria for a different like two different I lived in Canada, then I lived here. At, at least I'm still here. It's just like, I feel like I wasted some time in between my moving and traveling and transitioning. Um, and now trying to be like, okay, now I'm here. Let's get settled. Let's do something else. But guess who is in our 30s now? Um, sorry, I just said my age online. Um, you. But, you know, would you change anything? I, I guess I'd be more like Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like he's he's a little further along than I am, but uh, I mean, I think really I, I don't I don't think I change much. I mean, I, I feel like I've learned a great deal along the way, mm. and that's sort of kind of what life is about. It's about overcoming obstacles, moving forward. Um, I think if I could talk to my younger self, though, I think I'd tell him to be a little bit braver. I mean, mm. I think as a young man, I didn't realize how resilient we are, and you know, I think knowing kind of what I know now, I think I would have maybe jumped off a few more kind of metaphorical cliffs because, you know, I think in a surprising number of instances, you actually fly, you know, as opposed yeah. to fall. And when you do fall, there's usually people there to catch you. So I think I would, I would, I would take on more and, and, and not let fear kind of get in my way as much. So I think that would be my, what I would change. Oh, nice. Personally, um, don't go ahead. I, if you. Oh, Personally, I don't know that I'll change anything because I feel like all my experience. You're still are, growing. <laughs> no, that's one. But <laughs> that's one. But like, I feel like all my experience, the, the culmination of all my experiences, are part of why I'm where I am today, right? So I came in as an international student to the U.S. And then having to figure out if I'd gotten into med school, I'd have had to figure out, you know, the journey to ensure that you know I was in the right, you know, right standing with the government, making sure like all of my documents are intact and all that I, I don't know where life would have taken me right on the opposite end because i didn't i didn't you know because i didn't pass the mcat or because i i didn't get a good enough score to get into the med school that i wanted to get into you know i started working i've gotten married earlier than i probably would have if i went to med school you know so like my i feel like my life if i had gone how I exactly i planned it would have been completely different than the life i'm living right now so I think I think everything adds up to exactly where I am where I am, but I probably won't change anything. Maybe I'll go back in, in college and take some business classes to see if I would have pivoted a little earlier because I, yeah. I definitely enjoyed business school more than I enjoyed uh, a lot of the biochem classes I took when I was in undergrad. So <laughs> okay. that maybe I would have done. <laughs> All right. All right. Nice. Um, for me, uh, no, I think. Um, Initially, like starting out, like I, I thought, oh, I'd have my first film by the time I'm 22 or something like that. And I'd be, <laughs> this, you know, this young kid, like, you know, taking over and all of that. But um, funny enough, folks, I'm not religious, but I write in my every time I write in my um, my wife now uh, in her car, she's always playing. Um, she has it on this Joel Austin um the the pastor right she's she's always listening to him and there's something he always says like 
you know, just as much as you're grateful for the for the open doors, you need to be grateful for the closed doors too. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So I think for me, one of the best, you know, one of the I think the best qualities that I bring in as a you know as a Nigerian American screenwriter is the fact that I think that you know the ten years or so that I moved back to Nigeria and actually live in there and struggling to try to you know to make projects and stuff like that, I think it opened up my eyes even a bit more you know and it made me more conscious to just the you know the ills of the society and the structure and how things are here and you know how they compare to to over there and as a storyteller um you know making african films it, my experiences here merged with over like it just it it helps a bit more to be able to you know produce content that you know the global audience can relate to because of the times that i was forced to you know to spend there and here you know so you marry those things and you know experiences are never they're never really lost like you just Mm -hmm. even in failure especially in failure you learn so much right so um yeah so basically no I, i think i'm happy with the way things are and i really wouldn't you know change anything all I don't right, know about uh, anything, but for the most part, <laughs> I, I, I'm happy with the way things are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming and sensing rant. I really had fun having you. Um, I think for me, what I'm taking away from this episode is, you know, um, don't don't say no to your passion. It doesn't necessarily have to earn you a living, but don't say no to you. you can always pursue it side by side, earning a living. Do you guys have any last words for the audience, viewers, listeners? Andy uh, <laughs> uh, yeah no I mean I, I, I think you put it very very well I mean you know I, I think find your passion I mean you know don't don't shut shut it out um, search it out and and put as much energy as possible into that you know and uh, I mean I think putting yourself out there putting your passion out there is is how you uh, achieve those kinds of things and and so I guess that's what I would say. Yeah, um, I, I think for me, it's uh, it always works out in the end, right? If your passion is really that strong, no one has to tell you. Like it's it's it burns from within, so you're you wouldn't be able to turn away from it, right? Um, and also uh, for Ify, like I think another thing is when you're younger, like uh, Andy said earlier, like like just go for it a bit more right i mean i i I don't know you that well i don't know if that's already who you are but you know but really like just go for it your mind is your mind even in your 20s if you see someone and oh they say oh he's you know this big filmmaker and he's been doing this for donkey years or whatever like believe in yourself and go into the situation apply for you know for the position rub minds with them you know what i mean compete with them if if you have to like all those things like don't be afraid of it because yeah they have the experience and all that stuff but at the end of the day you realize that you may even have more to offer than a lot of these guys right so don't ever be intimidated Right, the Mamba mentality, Kobe, like shooting the air ball. <laughs> you feel like you're the man. So, I mean, it's uh, that's that's kind of my, my that, that's yeah, that's definitely where I am on the scale of life. I think my my, goal, my goals are pretty astronomical. So if I if I sit down with you and tell you the things I'm think, I'm thinking about, <laughs> my, my mind is running a, a mile a minute. So yeah, 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 definitely on that track. But I think I, Andy might have touched on it as well. There's that. The things I'm passionate about, which I pursue on the side, but then also in the culture we're living in America, first of all, you got to pay the bills, right? So I have a career that's helping with that. And then, uh, you know, mirroring uh, Toraya's background as, as well. I have family that's still back home in Nigeria. That, you know, I have to ensure that, you know, I'm doing my part because they made sacrifices for me to be here in the U.S. So it's balancing all that and making sure that, you know, things are clicking on, on all cylinders is where I'm at. But, you know, God, God has been good. I'll say that. Well, I think I think one other thing I would say is that you, it's really important also to share your passion with other people uh, because I, you never know um, how you can in, influence, inspire other people through your passion. So I, I think you know a lot of people sometimes keep it to themselves or whatever. I share share it with as many people as possible. 
would be the other thing I would say. That's actually a very good advice, Andy, because I was for the longest time very scared of sharing my dreams or like even talking about it. After I got a no, when I when I came here and I auditioned for a stage play, the director told me no. And for the longest time, I would never tell people that I could act or I could write. <laughs> I just took classes and I went home. And but yeah, that's a that's a great advice that I would take personally from here. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on Sense and Rent. Appreciate thank it. You. I, Thank yeah, you. I hope when I call you, you come funny. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 thank absolutely. you so much. Yeah, I had fun. I hope you guys did too. Same yeah. here. I'm here. Yeah. Awesome guys. Right. Really nice to meet you guys. Good to meet you. Good to meet you, Sebastian. Awesome. All righty. You guys All have right. a good afternoon. All right. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Sense and Rant. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you took a couple of things away from this episode. Just remember, whatever it is you want to do, whoever it is you want to become, all you have to do is start. Enjoy the rest of your day.